Hello and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. Today we're going to have a look at Austria's tactics in their opening match in the Euros. And really we're going to focus on Marcel Sabitzer who had a very good game but he's also a transfer target for some clubs around Europe. So we're going to analyse the match and then in Football Manager we are going to recreate it. We're going to test it, we're going to see how well it does with Austria and RB Leipzig. A little spoiler alert, it did very well with both teams. And before we get stuck into things, if you are new or you haven't yet, make sure you are subscribed. I'm on the road to 10,000 subscribers and make sure you like this video. Also leave a comment if you have any recommendations or any feedback. But let's get started. Here's the average position of Austria's players in Sunday's game. It's worth noting Subitz's average position here before we go on to discuss his impact on this match in more detail. The RB Leipzig midfielder occupied the left central midfield position in Austria's 3-1-4-2 shape. That left him typically occupying this channel where he's placed between the left wing and the very centre of the pitch. This image provides a breakdown of Austria's passing zones versus North Macedonia. The higher the percentage, the more passes Austria played in that particular zone. As this image highlights, Austria heavily favoured the left side of the pitch, Sabitzer's side, over the right in this game. This isn't by chance, a lot of this is down to the presence and influence of Sabitzer. Austria set out to play through the centre and the holding midfielder more than they ultimately ended up being able to. We see an example of how Austria looked to play parts of this game in and around the centre circle in their 3-1-4-2 shape, attempting to effectively progress the ball into North Macedonia's half and give their more advanced teammates a chance to create goal scoring opportunities. It was common to see Austria's back three and holding midfielder form the diamond shape we see here throughout Sunday's game. The wingbacks provided width, the central midfielders provided short passing options in the half spaces, the 6 foot 6 striker provided a big physical centre forward option for the team to aim for, and the striker partner sometimes dropped deep into the number 10 position to provide another short passing options like the central midfielders, and sometimes he sat on the shoulder of the North Macedonia centre backs, threatening in behind the back line, and that being an option that would more likely be used in the combination of the two strikers aerial threat. Austria's back three outnumbered North Macedonia's front two and played lots of short lateral passes with each other to try and open up passing lanes into the defensive midfielder. However, Pandev and Tragovsky were tasked with blocking those passing lanes and keeping the defensive midfielder in their shadow. We see an example of one occasion where Austria's centre back, Alaba, managed to play forward into the defensive midfielder's feet, but mentioned previously, Austria's goal wasn't just to find a defensive midfielder, but to find him with enough time and space to turn. Even on occasions where Austria managed to get the ball into the player's feet, North Macedonia generally did well to prevent him from progressing play. Sibitsa dropped deep in the left half space, where we see him on the ball in this image, doubling up on North Macedonia's right centre forward with the defensive midfielder. He did this constantly for the vast majority of the game and played a pivotal role in Austria's pool progression as a result. From this position, Sibitsa enjoyed most of the forward passing options that we mentioned earlier, which Austria had planned to be available for the defensive midfielder, while Baumgartner dropped deep into the advanced left half space that Sibitsa vacated quite often. The Bundesliga playmaker made good use of these options and consistently played a connecting role between Austria's back line and forwards. When North Macedonia's wide midfielder pressed Sibitsa when he received the ball in the ball progression phase regardless of how deep or wide he went, the team didn't press as a unit and as a result, gaps opened up in North Macedonia's once solid and disciplined defensive shape for Austria to exploit. Sibitsa didn't just play a key role for his team in the pool progression phase, he also played a key role in chance creation. This image provides a breakdown of the zones where Austria's passes into the penalty area were played on Sunday. Again, the central zone between the edge of the box and the halfway line is heavily involved during this phase, with 17% of Austria's passing into the penalty area coming from that zone. However, just as many of their passes into the penalty area, 17%, came from the narrow left half space, with just 4% coming from the right half space. Meanwhile, 33% of Austria's passes into the penalty area came from the left wing, while just 18% came from the right wing. Again, this isn't a coincidence and Sibitsa played a big part in how heavily involved the left side of the pitch was getting the ball into the penalty box and ultimately chance creation for Austria in this fixture. We see Sibitsa on the ball once again in the left half space, but this time more advanced than we've seen him previously. Before, we saw the RB Leipzig man occupying the deeper position to assist his side in the ball progression, but here, we see him just on the edge of the final third, where he was often found to assist his side in the chance creation. 
Sabitza created numerous chances for his team from this position and passes from this advanced area of the left half space played a big part in him generating 1.45 expected assists versus North Macedonia more than any other Austria player. He even provided the assist for Lena's opening goal from a well weighted and accurate dueled long ball from this area highlighting his effectiveness at creating chances via the left half space. Some of the chances that the 27 year old created from this position came from an attack that began with Sabitza picking up the ball and progressing it via his deeper left half space position which we analysed previously. He often progressed the ball down the left side of the pitch, forcing North Macedonia back and pinning them into their 5-3-2 deep block. He then advanced up the left half space before receiving the ball again and creating a chance. This shows his important roles in the ball progression and chance creation linked. Sibitsa demonstrated intelligence and spatial awareness throughout the game during both the ball progression and chance creation phases. During the chance creation phase where Austria were in possession in or around the final third, Sibitsa did a great job of finding space and making himself a viable passing option for his side thanks to these attributes and we can see an example of this. Sabitza was constantly Austria's biggest threat throughout the game and as the match wore on, the playmaker attracted more and more attention of his opponents when he got the ball. Austria pressed far more aggressively than North Macedonia did in this game and Sibitsa played an important role in his side aggressive defending. The RB Leipzig man made a total of 7 ball recoveries in this game, 3 of which came in the opposition's half. Sibitsa made more ball recoveries in the opposition's half than any other Austria player in this fixture. Sibitsa's role tended to change during the high pressing phase, however, like in the transition to attack, he often moved into more of a 10 position or even a centre forward position, with the holding midfielder Shagler moving up into central midfielder alongside Lehmann. This shifted Austria from a 3-1-4-2 into more of a 3-4-1-2 or a 3-4-3. When North Macedonia progressed further up the pitch into the middle and final third, Sibitsa usually dropped and Austria generally shifted back into their 3-1-4-2 shape. The purpose of this change during the high pressing phase was to prevent North Macedonia from enjoying numerical superiority during their build up with their 3 man back line outnumbering Austria's 2 man forward line. By turning Sibitsa into a temporary member of the forward line, Austria were able to match up with North Macedonia's back line, 3 vs 3 during this phase. At times, he was deeper than the other two forwards like in this example. While other times, Sibitsa was the most advanced Austrian player on the pitch, with the two other forwards sitting deeper. However, what generally remained consistent was that Sibitsa would stick to North Macedonia's centre back very tightly, regardless of his position as the Southeastern European side built out from the back, while the two other forwards would retain access to the wide centre backs and try to stay in a pretty tight triangle shape with Sibitsa. North Macedonia often tried to play out from the back through the holding midfielder similar to Austria and the Austrian attackers pressed the players quickly and aggressively while creating dangerous pressing traps to punish them when they played into this area in the centre of the triangle. So to conclude this tactical analysis of Austria's 3-1 win over North Macedonia, we can see how Sibitsa played a pivotal role in the ball progression, chance creation, transition to attack and high pressing phases for Austria to help them secure their opening game win versus Group C opponents North Macedonia at the weekend. And now we're going to go into Football Manager to look at the tactic and also look at the results we got in Euros using it with Austria and also the results in the Bundesliga with RB Leipzig. So now let's go to Football Manager. So here's the 3 one 4 2 tactic that I created for Austria and what I'm going to do is go through the team instructions, the player instructions and also the player roles. So for the team instructions first, for the mentality we are using a positive mentality, the attacking width is fairly wide so again bang in the middle, nothing too narrow and nothing too wide of course, now we have a nice balance of playing through the centre channels but also out wide. For the approach play we are going to be passing it into space so we are encouraging a lot of forward movement here, so for example if the wing backs move further forward we're trying to pass into his path rather than to his feet. And we are also going to be playing out from the defence so when using this instruction we have two playmakers actually so the deep line playmaker will tend to drop deep but also with the advanced playmaker as well. He wants to collect the ball as being a playmaker would so he's going to drop deep also to try and collect the ball. The Mazala may drop a little but not to the same extent. For the passing directness we are using a shorter passing directness with a standard tempo. 
In the final third, we are going to be sending in mixed crosses, which I really wouldn't change considering we are using a target man. And for the dribbling, we are going to be running at the defence. Again, encouraging to bring the ball further forward rather than just popping it about and passing it about between the players. When the possession has been lost, we are going to counter press to try and win the ball back as soon as possible. And when the possession has been won, we are going to be making our counter movements again, encouraging a lot of forward movements once we are in that ball progression phase or when we have won the possession. When the goalkeeper is in possession, he is going to be throwing it long. Out of possession down, we are using a higher line of engagement with a higher defence line. The defensive width is set to standard, so we are kind of covering all bases of the pitch. And for the pressing intensity, we are using extremely urgent, prevent the short goalkeeper distribution and also get stuck in. Now for this tactic on Football Manager, I'm only using extremely urgent to try and get better results in Football Manager. Of course, I want to provide you guys with a good tactic. Using more urgent is what I used in the Euros with Austria, but using extremely urgent gave me better results with RB Leipzig. So by default, I am giving you the version with extremely urgent. For the player roles, duty and instructions, in goal we are using a sweeper keeper on the supportive duty. For the two wide centre backs, we are using central defenders who are going to be looking to recycle and maintain the possession. A ball playing defender will try and launch defensive split and passes, also trying to initiate counter attacks. The central defenders are mostly going to be passing it amongst themselves. In between the two wide centre backs, we are using a libero, which for me is the role that Adaba played in on the weekend. On the flanks, we are using two wingbacks who are going to be providing us with our width. On the left flank, the wingback is going to be crossing it from the byline. On the right flank, he's instructed to shoot less often. The reason why he's not crossing from the byline, he can link up more with the Mazala. The Mazala can drive to the byline as well. So we're not just going to rely on the wingback to drive to the byline or crossing the ball really. The Mazala is also going to help down the right flank. Whilst on the left flank, I want the wingback to get to the byline and also have some nice link up play with the advanced playmaker and the deep line forward. In defensive midfield, we are using a deep line playmaker. In central midfield, we have the advanced playmaker role, which is the Sabitzer role for me. So we are asking him to run from his position. Also stay wider in that left half space, tackle harder as well, and mark tighter to try and get those ball recoveries in. His midfield partner is a Mazala on the attacking duty, and he is going to be shooting less often. Up front, we are using a deep line forward on the attacking duty. He can actually drop deep and be a number 10, but also play on the shoulder of defence lines, linking up with the target man. Again, exactly what we want to try and replicate from real life. And his strike partner is the target man, the big tall physical presence, and he too is going to be shooting less often. So that there wraps up the tactic, the player roles, the team instructions and all of that. And now we're going to have a quick run through the results that we got with Austria, but also RB Leipzig. So we are going to start off with the results before the Euros because of course I had to prepare for that. Ireland we beat them 1-0, Norway we beat them 4-2, Romania we beat them 5-1 impressively. Against Northern Ireland away we beat them 3-0 and at Norway and at home against Norway we beat them 3-2. But when we went away to Romania we lost 3-1. Now for the World Cup qualifiers, we beat Bosnia 2-1 at home, we beat Liechtenstein 5-0 away and Kazakhstan as well 5-1 at home. And then for the Euros prep, we played England in a friendly where we drew 1-1 and we also played Wales in a friendly where we beat them 3-1. Now the Euros has kicked off in our group, we had Croatia, Poland and Spain. We beat Croatia 2-1, we beat Poland 2-0 and then we drew against Spain 2-2. So against Croatia, the sides were kind of evenly matched. We had 14 shots, they had 18. We only had 3 on target, they had 9. But when it comes to the XG, it was fairly matched. I had 1.61, Croatia had 1.69. Our centre-back put us in the league before Rabic equalised and then Leymar scored a late winner in the 88th minute. Against Poland was kind of an easier match I would say. They had 10 shots, we had 13 but we had 7 on target with an XG of 1.78. Our striker, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce his name so I'm not even going to attempt. He scored in the 19th minute before Marko Arnautovic doubled our lead in the 44th minute. Then against Spain was a 2-2 draw, I had 12 shots, they had 19, we had a higher XG of 2.34, their XG was 1.92 and we also had a little bit more of the ball which is highly impressive against the Spanish side. David Alaba put us on the lead with a penalty in the 12th minute, Sergio Redihon then equalised for Spain in the 22nd minute, our striker put us ahead in the 54th minute before Paco Alassia harshly scored in the 93rd minute. 
That took us to the second round of the Euros where we played Switzerland and we also beat them 2-0 so I think we scored like two goals in all of our matches in Euros apart from one which is the one that we lost but Marko Arnautovic scored a double in that game. Then we played England in the Euros quarter final only to lose on penalties but very harshly. We had 15 shots, they had 12, we had 7 on target, they had 4. We had an XG of 2.41 and didn't manage to score in the 90 minutes or in extra time but England then managed to beat us on penalties with Marko Arnautovic missing the very first penalty. So Austria reached the quarter finals of the European Championship, the board expectation was to reach the second round minimum but for Austria to get to a quarter final of the European competition I find impressive. Now we're going to open up the RB Leipzig results and see how well they managed to do. Now for RB Leipzig, in the Bundesliga we were the champions, we played 34, we won 23, we drew 8 and lost 3, giving us a points tally of 77. In the UEFA Champions League we managed to finish 3rd but that group was a very difficult one. We had Barcelona, we had Juve and we only lost once in that group as well but it wasn't enough, it knocked us out to the Europa League where we eventually got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Tottenham Hotspur. In the DFB Pokal we got knocked out in the quarterfinals as well against Nuremberg. But just to look at some stats within the Bundesliga, we had we scored the third most goals with 61 for the most shots for, we came in third again with 526 for the fewer shots against, we were number one with 202. Best pass completion, we weren't in the top eight for the most possession, again, we weren't in the top eight, but for the most tackles won, we topped that table with 961 tackles completed and for the dribbles made, we came in third with 117. For the most clean sheets we were equal with Bayern Munich but within the Bundesliga we conceded the least giving us the best defensive record within the Bundesliga. For the player statistics for the most goals Yusuf Poulsen is the 4th top goal scorer with 16 goals. For the most assists we got Christopher Nkunku, Danny Almo and Solov all there making 8 assists. For the most shots Yusuf Poulsen is there with 83 and for the player of the match awards Danny Almo was the best player in the league it looks like. He had 6 player of the match awards, Shoboslay had 5 man of the match awards while Yusuf Poulsen also had 5. For the most key passes Danny Almo again with 152 by the way he is the playmaker playing in the Sabitzer role which is kind of crazy that I pick RB Leipzig and allow someone else but Sabitzer to play the Sabitzer role but Danny Almo for me is the better player and of course I'm looking for the better results. For the best pass completion Willie Orban is there with 95% at the bottom of the list. For the tackles one Danny Almo which is the Sabitzer role again he had 140 tackles completed Angelino had 127. For the clean sheets we have our Hungarian goalkeeper with 19 clean sheets and for the fuse conceded and for the fuse goals conceded again our goalkeeper with 19. How did we score most of our goals? 35 from play shots and 13 from headers, 6 from powerful shots, 3 from penalties, 2 from free kicks. With the assists, 22 of them came from free balls, 9 came from free kicks, 5 came from corners, 8 from crosses, 2 from opposition mistakes and 2 from medium passes. The top goal scorers and the most assist within this RB Leipzig team before we close this video was Yusuf Poulsen with 19 goals in all competition, Alexandra Shorloff, he got 10 goals in all competitions, Upu Karma managed to get 9, Dominic Schubersly got 7. For the most assists, Danny Armour with 13 assists and Christopher Nkunku with 10, the only two players to reach double figures with assists but unfortunately that there wraps up this video. If you guys have enjoyed it make sure you are subscribed to this channel I'm on the road to 10k subs so I would appreciate the little help. Also like this video as I feel that is key and most important. Also you can leave a comment if you have any recommendations or any feedback. I will see you guys soon or speak to you soon and also please stay safe. See ya.